What's going on gents and ladies? It's my John. Uh, I haven't done a video for two days, so I just uh, wanted to get one in before the day ends. Um, I'm currently actually watching Osho. Uh, I haven't actually talked about Osho in depth, actually. So uh, I'll probably make a video about him later on. He's an Indian, or was an Indian mystic. Um, you know, apparently he was a... a Buddha reincarnates. I don't know. I do like him though. He's um got some uh, real gems of wisdom to take into uh, consideration. <clears throat> but anyway, I've got a thing to say to a lot of the spiritual space seekers and uh, mystics on my channel. People who are into spiritual spirituality and meditation and everything. Um, enlightenment's bullshit. Okay, enlightenment's bullshit. It's uh. It's a, it's a it's a fraud man it's a fraud fucking lie it's it's bullshit it doesn't exist it's not real okay don't don't just, it's fucking bullshit it's bullshit um and the reason it's bullshit is because uh you're already enlightened yeah you're already enlightened you are already one with the universe you can't not be one with the universe Okay, you are one with it, whether you're aware of it or not, you are aware, you are it. Okay. By simply being aware of enlightenment, doesn't change the fact that you're already enlightened. Okay. You're already there. So, the concept of enlightenment is bullshit. Because the concept of enlightenment is, yet again, another thing for the ego to attain. I want enlightenment because it's going to make my troubles go away. No one, mostly anyone, everyone that's alive today is not happy with who they are. Okay, that's why we're into self-development, right? We're here to to make ourselves better people. We want to, you know, change, become more attractive and charismatic and, <clears throat> you know, professional, increase our finances. Well, we always want to be something else than we already are. Yeah, that's called a natural human desire for ambition and growth. It's a very natural thing. But enlightenment is seen as this holy grail thing that uh, once I get this, I'm going to be perfect. All my problems are going to be, they're going to go away, right? It's like getting a Mercedes or getting a relationship or getting money or your career. It's like, it ain't going to make you happy, dude. It ain't going to change who you are. You're already perfect. You're already who you're supposed to be. And if you grow and you blossom into something more beautiful later on, that doesn't even matter because later on isn't even, doesn't really exist, does it? Later on is something that is, again, a concept in the mind. You are who you are at this very moment. And the next moment you are who you are in that moment. And you may be a different person in that moment, who knows? But you will be different in every moment that you could possibly conceive of. So enlightenment is one of these things that we say, you know, that is something I want to get in the future. This is this uh, <clears throat> this amazing thing that awaits me and uh, through meditation and spiritual practices and maybe a little bit of drugs here and there, you know, I'll get there, I'll get enlightenment. It's like, no, enlightenment is something you already are. You're already there. There's nothing to get. It's nothing to attain. Okay, it's bullshit. You're better off thinking that enlightenment is a fraud concept that it's bullshit, that it doesn't exist, and just go on living your life. But your your priority shouldn't be, okay, well, if there's no enlightenment, well, fuck meditation, right? Fuck being a spiritual person. You're already a spiritual person. You can't not be one. But fuck being, you know, fuck trying to develop my spirituality, right? Fuck trying to become more present. Screw watching the mind. Screw watching my emotions. I'm just going to fucking be who I am, right? Because enlightenment is bullshit. And that's, that's definitely something you can go through. That's something you can do. In fact, a lot of spiritual teachers have said that to their students. They've said, yeah, exactly. Don't do meditation. Why are you meditating, you idiot? I ain't going to change anything. I ain't going to do anything. You know, meditation is a medicine. It's a, uh, it's a medicine to use when you are really just messed up in terms of controlled by your mind, you're not happy, you're constantly falling into depress depression, you're constantly, in, you know, anxious, 
and you just you just really messed up. Meditation is a medicine, but I have a very thorough thorough belief that meditation is a temporary state in your life. Because through meditation, I'm not saying get rid of meditation at all, but what I'm saying is meditation helps you get deeper and it allows you to be more present and it allows you to choose things that are more in line with who you really are. And when I say who you really are, I mean the deepest desires that you have okay, as a spiritual being, because most of your desires right now are going to be desires of other people, your conditioned you know, you've been conditioned to like certain things, you've conditioned to be a certain way, you've been taught to be a certain human being, you know, you're a John Doe, you, you've been told and you've been defined by society, by your family, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, your siblings, your, your brothers and sisters are your siblings, your cousins, your teachers, you know, all of these people told you who you should be. <clears throat> so before meditation, you're messed up because you're not, you don't know who the fuck you are. You are a accumulation of everything that anybody has said to you and everyone defines you you know sensitive people i have a theory that sensitive people are just very unconscious people and they are very impressionable people and they think that their identity is derived from other people which is why sensitive people are they can't be assertive they can't really stand up for themselves they can't be tough because they they derive their identity from other people. So they can't say no to anyone because they value other people's judgments and opinions more than they do their own. But as you grow, as you become more aligned, I'd say, it's easier to say no to other people and it's easier to stand up for yourself and it's easier to be more tougher because you realize that, ah, no one defines me. The outside world can't define me. And if they think they can define me, they're just kidding themselves. You know, if they think that they can define me, they're just trying to define themselves in some, you know, really weird back the alley way. They're just trying to project their own insecurity. So who does define who I am? Or who, who does exactly, right? It's a, it's a question that you should be asking yourself. Well, you do. You define yourself. Um, and back to the point about meditation is a, is a, you know, a, a prescription. It's a medicine for a, for a sickness. When you meditate for a while and you become aligned let's say with who you are for you know a decent amount of time <clears throat> clock time that is right so not psychological time uh, you know past and present and future and all that stuff i mean clock time physical time that you can measure after you've done that for a while you are able to choose things more applicable to who you are so rather than you know playing football because your mates played football at school and they told you that this is a cool sport and you should play football and you play football and you're like, I don't really like football. After meditating for a while, you realise, oh, I like to do rugby, you know, or I like to play chess, or I like to, I like to make music. Who the fuck knows what you like? But that becomes your meditation, yeah, because you are one with that activity. Again, you're always one with everything you do. Don't ever kid yourself into thinking that you're not one with everything you do. You're always one. It's just that you're not present with it. You're just thinking about other things all the time. But when you do something you really love, like your passion, you're in the moment and you're doing it and you are really one with what you're doing. So for me, funnily enough, uh, running, running, I get one with the running. I, you know, Even though I get tired and I sometimes get bored a bit, there's these moments where I just really get one with what I'm doing. I get into like this Zen mode where I'm like, time just passes and I'm just running and I could be there for hours and I wouldn't even know that I'm like gassed out. I'm breathing out of my fucking ass and my legs are starting to fall off and everything. Uh, weights as well. There's moments where I will get really like focused when I'm doing my weight training. <clears throat> and it's beautiful. I'm meditating in these moments and I don't even know it. And even... Like now, as I'm just chilling and watching TV, I'm, I'm just present. I'm in the moment. I'm just here. We're going for a walk. You know, you start meditating at every moment in your life, and every single moment becomes a, you know, a place to meditate. So you don't need to sit on your fucking bed or your chair and meditate for thirty hours a day, because you're technically meditating at once everywhere. <laughs> so. When you speak of enlightenment, when we talk of enlightenment, what we, we, we try to say is we say enlightenment is simply realizing that there is no past or future. There is only the present moment and your worries 
were based on delusion, on a delusion that past and future exist, and that you don't have any control over anything. But in order to get that thing that you're looking for, you have to let go of that thing that you're looking for because you only get that thing in the future, right? So you just have to be present in this moment, okay? And the best way you can do that is by doing something that you love to do, okay? Easy advice. Easy fucking shit, man. It's not hard to take it, right? Take it easy. See you in the next one. Peace.